Hi YouTube, my name's Jeff and I'm the Vegil Guy. You may have seen my video on my homemade Vegil burner, or even my homemade high temperature foundry video. Well, a question I keep getting asked is, how hot can my all burner go? And I really don't know. So I set out on a mission to melt some copper. Stick around if you want to see what happens in this nice short video. Hi again guys. So how hot can my oil burner go? I really can't say. It has no problem melting aluminium or aluminium as our American friends like to say. And that has a melting temperature of about 660 degrees Celsius or 1220 Fahrenheit. But can it do more? Well, copper has a melting point of 1085 degrees Celsius or 1985 Fahrenheit. And I had a few bits of scrap to play with, so I thought I'd have a go. Now, I used all the goodies that I've already shared with you. That's the burner, the foundry and the insulation around the foundry. But as it turned out, my timing was a little off. I stoked up my burner on a glorious sunny morning, gave it half an hour until the crucible was glowing red hot, then I fed in some copper. Minutes later, the weather changed. Typical. I know this sounds like a cop out, folks, but I became a little nervous. I work outdoors without any cover, and if you look closely at the lid in this video, you can see the beginnings of rain. I didn't fancy the superheated steam scenario, so I pulled the plug on my test a few minutes earlier than I'd have ideally liked to. But I think we can still call this a success. If you look closely at these pieces of copper tubing, you can see that they've actually melted together. They've bonded, they've fused. There's even evidence, if you look closely, of drips, like you'd see on the sides of a candle. I know some folks will disagree with my conclusion, but please hear me out here, guys. Firstly, I didn't heat the copper as long as I would have liked. It only had a few minutes. Secondly, the foundry is only partially insulated at the moment. The base has no insulation, and critically, neither does the lid. And as we all know, heat rises, so I think a lot of energy has been wasted in this trial. Thirdly, I could have prepared the copper better. I could have flattened it out to remove the air gaps and maximise the contact with the crucible. And that would have got better results again, I think. And yes, I know it sounds like I'm making excuses. But given all of this, I am going to claim a victory here. I believe this oil burner of mine really could generate the necessary heat to melt the copper. With better insulation and a little more time, the result would have proven it. So how hot can it go? I still don't know for sure, but I feel confident that this burner in a well insulated foundry could easily top the 1085 degrees Celsius necessary to melt this copper. And that's it guys, a very short video I know, but hopefully it's one that will answer at least partially a question I've been asked a lot lately. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it. If you didn't, then why not let me know why, I'm always eager to improve my videos. Your comments and questions are always welcome, and I'd really love to hear from you, so do drop me a line below. Please check out my YouTube channel, and of course my other videos. I think I've got 50 plus videos out there now, and I'm receiving some fantastic feedback and seeing real interest from subscribers, so thank you all for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do, you're more than welcome. So that's it for now folks, thanks very much for watching.